You guys on TikTok? Yeah, me neither. <laughs> James, I actually enjoy TikTok, okay? Don't don't talk smack. I tell you what. So there's a man named Bilal on TikTok who's going viral these days, essentially telling us the things that we do to our homes that make them look cheap. And we wouldn't want to do that, would we? <laughs> He's admittedly a very young man, 23, yet he has the knowledge and the worldly insight to tell us how to live our lives, basically. <laughs> but seriously, there's an article by insider.com that gives us seven examples of of what he thinks can cheapen your home. I wanna go through them because there is, you know, I guess he has a point sometimes. Let's go on this journey together right before you hit that like button because liking the video really helps us a lot. Appreciate it. So the first thing that he talks about is scale. He said it's common for people to make their homes look cheap by putting the wrong size furniture in the space. So a great example of this is if you have a small room, you buy little small chairs and sofas and tables just to keep everything nice and compact. You're essentially scaling down everything to accommodate the space. But I think the opposite is true. You can have fewer items that are a little more substantial to fill out the space, make them feel more comfortable and open, and also a little more organized and thought out. Your guests aren't gonna think that the space was just thrown together and kind of haphazard. Everything was thoughtfully put together to make the best use out of your space. So that's a good one, I appreciate it. We got a kitchen related one here, and this is about not having cohesive looks in your kitchen, which can really cheapen things out. If you're a collector of different types of Tupperware. At one point I had like five different types of Tupperware and like half the lids were missing. It was a disaster. I did a container purge and got one nice set from Costco and now I'm good to go. I'm very happy about it. But this goes for everything from your glassware to your dishes, to your cutlery. Having a nice streamlined, cohesive aesthetic, I think can do a lot for your kitchen, especially for someone that loves open shelving. I'm not a huge fan of it for the practicality element, but this sort of goes back to the whole thoughtfulness aspect of the previous point where everything looks like it was chosen rather than just collected and hoarded. And you're essentially removing any unnecessary clutter as well, which I think is an important thing. And hey, if you have a bunch of mismatched pieces that you enjoy, that's great. Maybe store the ones that you're not using very much and then you can bust them out when you need to. But in terms of what's on display in your kitchen, if you wanna keep things nice and organized and tidy and ultimately decluttered, then try and find pieces that are a little more matching and at least in the same style and maybe color scheme as well. The clutter continues in the bathroom and this is more of an out of sight, out of mind type of thing. You don't need matching makeup brushes and all that, but you wanna limit the clutter that's on the vanity, on the sort of tabletops in your bathroom. And the way you can do that is just by having good storage. So that can start from a nice storage tower, your vanity under your sink, all that stuff. Have compartments for things, utilize medicine cabinets, make sure everything's nice and tidy. That's kind of an easy one to implement. So you don't need to necessarily go out and buy a bunch of things. Hopefully, if you have the right storage. Even myself, I noticed that things were starting to get left on the bathroom countertop and I didn't really have a place to put anything. So I just researched and I just got a nice medicine cabinet, installed it on the wall to the side. Looks fine. Kind of a temporary solution, to be honest, because I'm going to be remodeling that bathroom in six to 12 months. But I really wanted to eliminate that sort of messy situation. When your bathroom is free of clutter, mess, and it's nice and organized, that'll make it a lot easier to get ready at the beginning of the day and wind down at the end of the day. It will make it feel a little more, I don't know about luxurious necessarily, but it's just gonna be better for you all around. Say no to traditional bath mats if you want a luxurious bathroom. This one I kind of get as well. I enjoy the little bath mats, you know, in front of the shower, in front of the bath. Just something nice and cozy to walk on when you get out of said bathing places. But I suppose a more luxurious thing is to just have a Persian rug in the middle of your bathroom. One big old rug. <laughs> Doesn't need to be a big one, but a nice single runner or even a circular rug. It's hopefully a little moisture resistant because you don't want that thing to get moldy. Another way to cut down on the visual clutter is to just take one rug instead of multiple small ones that can feel a little bit disjointed as well. And I guess he's sponsored by Ruggable because he does mention that. What's great about Ruggable, not sponsored by us, is their machine washable rugs, which I think is very, very important in this case. The nice part of a single unified rug in a bathroom is it's going to do a better job at staying put. You're not gonna have a bunch of little rugs moving around and crinkling up. It's just one solid piece that's gonna stay there. Remember when we talked about matching dinnerware and all that? That was good. Matching bed sets, not good. This one I'm not gonna hate on too much. I guess it feels cheap in the sense that typically bedroom sets are gonna be good value because they're often packaged together at a discount. But I do think there's some value in those sets because it really simplifies the decision-making process for you. You're looking for one set rather than three separate pieces, let's say, that all need to coordinate 
really, really well and really nicely. Personally, I do enjoy looking for pieces that go together stylistically, but have their own identity as pieces. But I don't want to bash anyone that's going out and getting a bedroom set, especially if you just want a simple solution. Perhaps you don't have the time or the luxury to go out and pick every perfect piece that you want. Sometimes the bedroom set is good enough and I think that's fine. It's fine. Go to Ikea. It's great. This last one's really interesting because it's something that I really want to talk about on this channel eventually. And it's exteriors. Basically, there's interior design, but there's also exterior design. Making sure the curb appeal of your home, your front yard is looking nice, your backyard's looking great. I recently landscaped my backyard a little bit and I kind of want to dive into that world a little bit more. Let me know in the comment section below if you'd be interested in outdoor design, exterior stuff. It'd be fun. He then goes on to say, comfort is important. You don't need to sacrifice aesthetics, however. And while I do agree, I think there's always going to be a moving range or scale, a ratio of comfort to style. Ultimately, at the end of the day, if it's a room like the family room, where you're going to be using it day in and day out to flop out and relax, comfort is going to be very important to me. In a North American living room, where it's more something you look at rather than use, then you can go a little more stylized because it's more of a showpiece, occasional use room. You don't need as many functional pieces because you just have to think about how you're utilizing those rooms. I think the beautiful thing about the day and age that we live in is the fact that we do have an increasing amount of options in places where we can go and buy stuff that really resonate with us. The technology is getting better, the variety, the materials, the feature sets. There's a lot of directions we can take our design inside. So for this point, I would just think about the room itself. How do you want to use it? Are you going to use these furniture pieces on a regular basis? If so, invest in quality so they'll last and comfort because you want to be happy and comfortable when you're sitting in them. You're not just looking at them like pieces of art. Here's some more reactions to design and stuff, which I love to do. These videos are so much fun.